This video was made possible through the support of my patrons. This video is also sponsored by Zavi. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Tardis, and welcome to another Doctor Who Steelbook unboxing video. Now this is the latest release in the animated recreations range. This is Galaxy 4, which I ordered from Zavi. And let's try and get this parcel packaging open and take a look inside. Now, as you know, I've normally not been one to get the steelbooks of the animated stories uh, because I missed the boat out when they first started getting released. But since the Evil of the Daleks range where I thought the steelbook cover was substantially better than the uh, than the standard format, I thought I'll dive right in and I'll get Galaxy 4. This is a brilliant cover as well. I do actually have a facsimile of the normal cover for the DVD and Blu-ray of Galaxy 4 because I went to the BFI screening. So I've got a little, little postcard here, you know, when I went to the South Bank and did a whole video segment on it. So check that out if you wanted to know my, what my experience was like on that day. But yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at the Galaxy 4 Steelbook. Now, as usual, the blinding light in the middle of my room is reflecting on the plastic. So let's ruin the collector's value forever and open this thing up. So for those of you who don't know, Galaxy 4 is a story in Doctor Who's third season back in 1965. Uh, starring William Hartnell, Maureen O'Brien, and Peter Purvis. And I can't get the thing open. There we go. Yes, finally made it. So uh, let's open this thing up, try not to damage the cardboard uh, or the steelbook in the process. There we go. Wonderful stuff. As usual, we will keep a hold of the cardboard packaging, but for now, we'll just take it off and take a look at the back of the steelbook. So you've got the first Doctor there uh, observing the Chumblies and the Dravins uh, surrounding the TARDIS. Uh, something that never actually happened in the story, but it still looks great anyway. And of course we have the three suns in the sky there. This is brilliant. Uh, I do like the uh, the consistent approach that they've taken to the steelbooks, where the front of the steelbook is the TARDIS and the back is the Doctor witnessing it being surrounded. The last time we did a steelbook unboxing was for Evil of the Daleks. So there we've got the TARDIS surrounded by the Emperor and some Daleks there and on the back we've got Jamie and the second Doctor watching it happen uh, so yeah I really like this uh, I really like this uh, sort of consistent look I also think the orange really makes it stand out from some of the other steelbooks in this range. Galaxy 4 is a bit of an odd choice uh, to animate. Uh, I'm sure there are some fan favourites like The Massacre, like uh, Dalek's Master Plan, things like that, that may, may, people would rather got animated. But you know, if they're going to get around to Galaxy 4 at some point, they might as well do it now while they're still uh, trying to figure out the animation process, while they're still trying to find their groove and their style. Uh, it had to get animated at some point. Galaxy 4 is a pretty small, relatively low stakes story. Uh, I think it was a good choice to do. So let's take a look at the back of the cardboard sleeve, which says three of the original 1965 master recordings of Galaxy 4 were lost soon after the program's original transmission. However, audio-only recordings have survived and have been used here to create a brand new, fully animated presentation of this lost classic. I also do like the wording here at the top. The Doctor stars alongside his travel companions, Vicky and Stephen, kind of making them sound like, oh, I guess that they're along for the ride. But let's see what we have on this set according to this cardboard sleeve. So episodes one to four in animated black and white, as well as episodes one to four in animated color. I imagine one to four are in a four by three aspect ratio, but we'll take a look at that later. Remastered surviving original episode three. So episode three is called Airlock. It was the only one of the four to survive the junking process and to have been found. Uh, and also remastered surviving clip from episode one. I believe that seven to eight minute footage from episode one that was maintained. I don't know the specifics in this case while recording this segment of the video, but for example, the Doctor's regeneration at the end of the 10th planet survived because the clip itself, not the episode, was in the custody of Blue Peter, or the fact that they showed it on Blue Peter meant that there was still some sort of like original archive recording footage of it, which is how that scene, even though that episode is lost, the regeneration still survives. So photographic reconstructions of episode one, two, and four, that would be like a telesnap recreation, audio commentaries, making of documentary, finding Galaxy 4 documentary, I'm sure that will have all the answers there, photo gallery, production subtitles, PDF ROM content. Now before we open this up proper, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Zavi, who have always been really, really supportive of the content I put out. I ordered this from Zavi uh, because I like to collect steelbooks. I'm not a steelbooks completionist, but if there's a film I really, really like or a series I really, really like, I will try and prioritize getting the steelbook. My latest purchase from Zavi is Friday the 
13th the eight movie collection so there's eight friday the 13th films here in this brilliant presentation this brilliant package and it also comes with all of these little art cards these posters i need to try and find a way to like sort these out and try and maybe put them all in a frame together like some sort of collage but yeah uh I, i'm really looking forward to diving into this franchise myself and my wife we love horror films uh i need to introduce her to the friday the 13th series and this is probably the best way to do it i got this off zavi but they have a great range of steelbooks i've also pre-ordered the last night in soho the new edgar wright film on steelbook from their website uh, so be sure to check out our sponsor Zavi using the affiliate link in the description below If you use that link and buy anything off the website It helps to support the channel and if you're buying something from Zavi that is not a pre-order You can use the coupon code mr. Tardis 10 to get 10% off at checkout with the exception of pre-orders That is a code that works site-wide and if you are buying clothes You can use the coupon code mr. Tardis 20 to get 20% off anything in the clothing range on Zavi So be sure to check those out. Thank you once again to Zavi for sponsoring this video so let's open this thing up and let's take a look inside. So uh, what I'm going to do first and foremost is uh, this BFI card is going to slot right in here. It's going to stay here so I can collect this thing forever and have it as part of a little set. But for now, let's take a look at the booklet that we've got here. Uh, much like Evil of the Daleks, we've got a really great in-depth looking booklet here. Because Galaxy 4, while not a particularly important story in the grand scheme of Doctor Who, is a story with quite a lot of history. It is the only Doctor Who TV credit for writer William Ems. Uh, it's also the directorial debut of Derek Martinus, who would go on to be one of the show's most prolific, most uh, impactful directors. And also because companion Stephen Taylor was brought in quite late in the game and had to fill in the role of both Barbara and Ian, uh, he got all of their dialogue, which Peter Purvis did not like as he thought it uh, it feminized the character a bit. Uh, whether or not that is the case in the actual story, uh, we'll leave the, the historians to figure that out. So yeah, this is a two disc set. We'll remove the discs and take a look at the background here. It just looks like it is the, uh, the unnamed planet in Galaxy 4. It's quite a minimalistic cover, but it looks really, really cool. So what I'll do now is that I will uh, make my way through the discs. We'll take a look at the special features and just see what exactly is in this collection for Galaxy 4. To select audio navigation, press enter now. This 2021 release of Galaxy 4 comes on two discs, with the menu showing the landscape of the unnamed planet in Galaxy 4, where the TARDIS has landed. Disc 1 is where you'll find all of the black and white Galaxy 4 goodness, with all four parts animated in black and white, with a slight grain filter, and in a 4x3 aspect ratio from Big Finish Creative. You'll also find the original surviving part 3 of the story airlock, as well as the 6 minute surviving clip from part 1, 400 Dawns, which is all that remains of this story in the archives. You can also watch a Telesnap recreation, which includes any surviving footage and off-air recordings. Disc 2 is where you'll find the colour recreation of Galaxy 4 and the majority of the special features, but more on them later. While Galaxy 4 seems like an odd choice to animate, it's a smart logistical decision. Galaxy 4 has surviving footage to base character and set designs off of, but it also has a very small human cast and only a handful of locations. It also works to address the hartnell Troughton balance of animated recreations. As a result of Galaxy 4's logistical restraint, by design it's not the most polished or ambitious looking animated story, but it still has its charms. William Hartnell looks fun and expressive, the Chumblies are a visual highlight, and there's some clever liberties with the source material, such as making Marga and the Dravins significantly taller, and making the Dravins uniform in appearance. The interior of the Dravins ship has also been grubbed up somewhat, to justify the Doctor's attitude towards it when he sees it on camera. Uh, it's pretty backward now, isn't it? Yes, it's almost fossilised. <laughs> I also really like the Australian-inspired orange landscapes of the planet, and while the bright colour scheme of the real ship has turned some fans off, I really like the adherence to the 1960s pulp sci-fi aesthetics. With the characters themselves, there seems to be a bit of give and take in regards to the animation. While the proportions are a bit off, particularly the heads in comparison to the rest of the body, the running animations when viewed from the front and the back are an improvement from prior releases. We 
We also get some first doctor attention to detail, like him wiping down the driving seat before sitting down. Though we do lose other details that we can compare with the surviving footage, like Marga clapping in front of a sleeping driving to wake it up. Here, that's replaced with a foot stamp and the driving just doesn't respond. Also, while the real gate that Vicky gets trapped behind has been the subject of fan mockery, the animated version makes the gate look even easier for the cast to slip through, which is a really odd visual change. In terms of additions, we get some cool looking flashbacks to the Dravins and the Rills crash landing and their brief space battle, but in turn, we seem to have lost the ambitious camera work from director Derek Martinez. I understand losing the overhead shot from when the crew arrive in the Draven ship, but it's a shame that his opening TARDIS shot from episode 1 wasn't recreated, and while I understand the logistical and story element of making the drivings identical, it does mean that the individuality of the three driving performers gets lost. Thankfully, we do still have surviving footage of Marina Martin, Susanna Carroll, and Lynn Ashley, so their performances aren't completely lost, and this criticism, I must stress, is as subjective as it gets. On the other hand, I loved their handling of Marga's monologue from part 3, and the Chumblies are oddly expressive. We also get the actual destruction of the planet, which was a pretty cool set piece. Also, I think that due to the smaller cast and the more thoughtful framing compared with the evil of the Daleks, there isn't as much in the way of awkward cropping or cast members missing from shots. There's not too much else to say about the animated Galaxy 4. It looks good where it counts, but there's always improvements that can be made. But it does sell the scale and the intimacy of the story at the same time. Characters like Vicky could be more expressive, but the Doctor and Marga look great. And there's something inherently pretty awesome and special about a colour Hartnell title sequence. Orange was the best choice, in my opinion. As for the special features, there's a wonderful assortment of audio commentaries. Disc 1 exclusives are commentaries from Maureen O'Brien, Peter Purvis, and Lynn Ashley of the black and white surviving footage, and that's not on disc 2. But across both discs, we've got moderated commentaries from Toby Haydock of the animated recreations, part 1 with Maureen O'Brien and Peter Purvis, part 1 again with producer Gary Russell, Part 2 with Galaxy 4 Vision Mixer Clive Doig and Special Sound Designer Brian Hodgson. Part 3 with Galaxy 4 Assistant Floor Manager Sue Willis. Part 4 with Maureen O'Brien, Peter Purvis and Lynn Ashley. And Part 4 again with the animation producer slash director Chloe Gretsch. All are wonderful commentaries, it's great to hear from Sue Willis in particular. On disc 2, you'll find a HD photo gallery, the animated trailer, and two documentaries. One about the unique story of how the surviving footage and episode of Galaxy 4 returned to the BBC archives, with thanks to dedicated film collector Terry Burnett, and it's a really heartfelt 20 minute feature about stumbling across these finds, and how unsuspecting people can become a part of the Doctor Who family. And lastly, we've got a 40 minute making of feature from Moon Balloon Films called The Trouble with Chumblies, directed by Chris Chapman and hosted by Toby Haydock. The documentary also features a brilliant unseen footage from writer William Enns, recorded in the 1980s, and sees the Chumblies return to harass Stephen Taylor. Oh, not today, thanks. <laughs> Toby in the documentary rightly points out how Galaxy 4 is written off by people as a small inconsequential story, but it does have a fascinating behind the scenes history, as it was a turbulent time on the show, as Verity Lambert was leaving and the cast kept on changing as the show was starting its third season. It's a great feature, lots of fun moments, and it was also lovely to see Galaxy 4's originally slated director Mervyn Pinfield get a spotlight, and you can also tell that Toby Haydock has a great time putting these things together. That's the top of a Dalek. Well, it is. It's it's also the bottom of a Chumbly. So that is the top. <laughs> that is the top of the Emperor Dalek in a Patrick Troughton story called Evil of the Daleks, directed by Derek Martinez, yes. as it happens. But the Emperor's hat is is the Chumbly's tutu. I uh, see. So nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted, no. Also, this Blu-ray set includes ROM PDF documents with Radio Times listings and more, but due to my setup at home, I have no way to access these. However, a lot of the press release and Radio Times info can be found in the information booklet that comes standard with these releases. Overall though, this animation probably ranks around the middle of what's come before, just by sheer utility. Galaxy 4 has the odd moment of spectacle, but it doesn't really have anything like the final 
final end from Evil of the Daleks, or is as atmospheric as the Macra Terror. It's animated pulp sci-fi from the 1960s, and it's an effective translation of a lost story, even though I think it could have done a lot more with its camera movements. As for a full package, however, it's great to see such a quaint release get loads of audio commentaries and a bulky behind the scenes feature, plus the story behind its partial recovery is just the icing on the cake. Did Galaxy 4 deserve such affectionate treatment? Debatably, but it received it nevertheless, and this fan is incredibly grateful. And that's the Galaxy 4 Blu-ray, or specifically here, the Steelbook release. Now, the last time I did this, I showed my animated collection of uh, Doctor Who Blu-rays, which uh, was mostly complete with the exception of Evil of the Daleks being a Steelbook and the rest being the standard Blu-ray releases. Well, uh, I have been quite fortunate over the past uh, week or two where I've been able to fill out the collection. So you already know that I've got Galaxy 4 and I've got Evil of the Daleks there, those beautiful steelbooks there. Um, I did manage to get a used copy of the original version of Power of the Daleks. For the special edition that they released a few, uh, a few years later, there is no steelbook version. So I may just get my Blu-ray version, just put it in the steelbook just to save some space and so that my collection looks consistent on the shelf. But that's not all, because for incredibly low prices, I was able to get sealed copies of the Macra Terror, the Faceless Ones, Fury from the Deep, and the Web of Fear. With the exception of Sharda, I have a complete animated steelbook collection, and all of them sans power of the Daleks are factory sealed. Now, obviously, that will not last long. I'm not here to uh, collect them or display them. I'm here to use them. I'm here to get use out of them. They will be taken out of their packaging, but I just wanted to show you folks now that I have managed to catch up on the Steelbook collection for animated recreations of Doctor Who. Like I said, I've got the special edition of Power of the Daleks there. I've also got Sharda as well, but not in Steelbook, just the standard Blu-ray release. Uh, I got this way before they announced Season 17 was getting a collection release. So that collection release is coming out... At so that collection release is slated for a December release date, which means we're probably going to get it in January, because they always push those things back. It's okay, I understand. You're an idiot. And I'm not really fussed about the steelbook for this because it's more just the animated recreations of classic Doctor Who stories. And I'm getting this uh, this story again in the season 17 collection that's meant to be coming out soon. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the steelbook collection as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, for classic animated Doctor Who. Obviously, it's mainly just a case of having a consistent collection and having the steelbooks, but in some cases, like the Macra Terror, it comes with a special disc which has got Gridlock, Doctor Who Confidential 4 Gridlock, and an audio commentary for that story, the Series 3 story with the Tenth Doctor, but it also has uh, animation footage for The Wheel in Space, which is like a 10-minute abridged version of the first episode. So, yeah, so there is some utility to having the steelbook, and once you've got one, I guess you kind of have to sort out getting the rest of them. But with the exception of Power of the Daleks, which I paid about maybe £40 for, I got the rest of these below RRP, which kind of astounded me. I actually saved quite a lot of money waiting and hoping for these things to turn up, and I would have been happy with them used, but the fact that they are still, like, shrink-wrapped, these four, it's kind of amazing. But anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching this unboxing and deep dive into Galaxy 4. Hopefully, there will be a review coming soon, so if you want to be notified of that, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and folks in the comment section below, let me know how your Steelbook collection is going along, or if you're just going for the standard Blu-ray or DVD collections, that's absolutely fine. Uh, let me know what your collections are looking like at the moment and also what animated stories that you want to be restored next do you want another Hartnell story who uh, in this set only has the one and it only is Galaxy 4 we do of course have the 10th planet we've got the reign of terror but it seems like the animation teams prefer to be animating Troughton stories at the moment but Hartnell his time will come his time will come